Fox 2 following breaking news. UAW President Sean Fain delivering an update on auto contract negotiations. This as we head into day 29 of the strike. The latest from the UAW and what striking workers are saying. That is coming up. Good morning, Liz. Yeah, also coming up, how Birmingham Police Department is making moves to keep you safer following the terrorist attack in the Middle East. They're boosting police where and when. We've got those headlines coming up as well in the 11. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. This has been a busy Friday morning, and we want to begin with some other breaking news out of Shelby Township, but that is where police and fire crews are on scene of a school bus crash. 26 Mile is closed at Shaner. We're being told that the bus was hit by a black minivan. That van then caught fire. So far, there is no word yet on how many people or how the people in the van are doing or those on the school bus. We're going to let you know as soon as we hear more from Shelby Township Police. And with that, good morning. Thanks for being with us on this busy Friday. I'm Amy Lang. Yeah, and I'm Brandon Hudson. Uh, it is now day 29 of the UAW strike against the Detroit Three. And moments ago, Union President Sean Fain delivered a new update on the status of negotiations. Today's Facebook message coming just days after workers made a surprise move and walked off the job at Ford's truck plant in Kentucky. Those analyzing the auto industry say the work stoppage at Ford truck in Kentucky is a game changer. The Kentucky plant is where they build the heavy duty F-Series pickup trucks and the Expedition and Navigator Sport Utilities. Those are big money makers for Ford. As we said, that walkout was unexpected and it's clearly a sign the union is ramping up the pressure. In today's message, Fain is calling on all members to continue to support the strike effort. If we're going to raise standards rather than lower them, if we're going to go from defense to offense, then we're going to need reinforcements. We're going to need to show up for each other in a big way. So tomorrow I ask you if you can do it, show up for each other on the picket line. Bring strikers some food, some music, some solidarity. Now, Faye went on to say the decision to shut down the Ford plant in Kentucky came after Ford failed to deliver on pay raises that the union has been calling for. Our coverage of today's announcement from the UAW continues now. We are working to hear reaction from striking workers who just heard Sean Fain's message. Fox 2 Scott Wolchek has been talking with many of those workers for weeks now as the strike drags on. Scott's live now in center line with what picketers are saying about the newest message. Scott, we're hearing from Sean Fain. We are moving into a new stage of this stand-up strike. Amy, that's absolutely right. That is the key message. It's a new phase, and that means they're not waiting for Fridays anymore to call people to the picket lines. It could happen at any time, and we saw that with Ford's Kentucky truck plant, right? That's one of the most important plants to Ford. Produces about $25 billion in profits a year, and Ford execs have been getting on calls, uh, especially yesterday, to really kind of talk about the damages, right? You know, we've heard them talk about the loss, uh, you know, um, layoffs for suppliers, layoffs for the companies and Ford is saying that uh, you know they're really at their limit when it comes to economically what they can offer on these deals. Fain going on on Facebook Live earlier and saying that saying that they're at their limit is quote pathetic irony. Now I'm here with these uh, Stellantis parts plant workers and this is Angelina. Angelina was watching that Facebook Live. Angelina what were your thoughts about uh, Fain's message today? Um, well, I'm glad that he's the one who's leading us in this fight. I, I voted for him. I have faith in him. Uh, as far as these companies, it's really disappointing that they're unwilling to budge on certain key items, you know, key issues. It's um, very disappointing. And as far as, uh, like you just said, with Ford saying that they're at their economic cap or whatever, um, I don't believe you. You have enough money to pay your CEOs, your executives, your shareholders. Start cutting back on them. Start giving what we need to keep your company going. Because at the end of the day, it's us that bring your profits. Now, you guys, uh, the, the strikes been going on for 29 days. Uh, the parts plants have been on strike for three weeks. How are you holding up here? Um, we're holding up. You know, it's, it's not easy. It really is not easy walking this picket line daily. We want to be back in, in, in the plant. We want to be working. We want to be servicing our customers. 
but unfortunately the company doesn't want that for us and right now they've showed that they don't really care for us to come back because they have scabs in there working doing our job they're busing them in daily they rented a bus to bus and scabs to do our work daily but they say that they don't have any money but they're they're spending money daily on these buses they're spending money on these uh, security guards here to walk the buses in securely not that you know <laughs> we're going to do any harm to the bus but they're they're protecting their scabs but they're not protecting us now, it sounds like you've got a lot of frustration just towards the amount of money. You know, you've kind of heard how much money the CEOs of the big three are making. And uh, it seems like every week, uh, so many of these negotiations are behind closed doors. Personally, as, as an auto worker who's been working for 23 years in the business, I mean, what would you like to see done? I just really would like for the companies to stand behind job security to guarantee that we have work here in the United States at our assembly plants. That's what the, the big guarantee, you know, the big thing for me is job security. Absolutely. Well, as you know, your president, Sean Fain, is working for that. Obviously, uh, the strike still ongoing, deals still being made behind uh, closed doors with those negotiations uh, with the big three. We'll keep you updated with the very latest reporting live in Centerline. Scott Walchek, Fox 2 News. Thank you so much. Appreciate your hard work out there. We know you've been out on the line with them, and uh, we know you'll have much more for us as we learn more. Thanks so much. We have some sad news to pass along. Weight Watchers founder Florian Mark has died, and she was 90, 90 years old. 90 years old. You know, for decades, Mark helped millions of people lose weight with a company that she created from the ground up back in 1966. Not only was she a prominent businesswoman, she was a leader in the Jewish community and supported many charities. Mark's message and her motivational speaking focused on self-esteem, self-growth, and weight loss. She received numerous awards and was the first woman to be inducted into the National Management Management Association's Hall of Fame. Again, Florian Mark was 90 years old. The cause of her death not yet known. New this morning, and for the second time this week, a deadly crash shuts down the lodge, and this time it is northbound ramp of I-75. And you can see here a truck and sedan collided head-on. State police say that the driver of the Ford Fusion was going the wrong way and hit the truck. The driver of the truck suffered minor injuries. The fusion driver died at the scene. State police are investigating. The roadway was closed for several hours, but has since reopened to traffic. And a young Detroit boy who should be looking forward to enjoying this weekend with his family is instead in the hospital. He is uh, this morning the latest victim of an accidental shooting with a secured gun in the city. Now, this happened at the home on Larchmont Street on Detroit's west side yesterday afternoon. No parents were home at the time. A nine-year-old boy got a hold of the weapon and it fired it, hitting his four-year-old brother. Boys uh, found the gun up in one of their older brother's bedroom, started playing with the gun. Four-year-old, talking about a baby. Threw his cheek into his left shoulder, and he's an incredibly strong little boy because he was uh, up and alert and talking and didn't seem like he was all that phased at the hospital. Oh, my God. It's a, it's a tragic thing. It is. I, I, I don't know. You know, uh, I can't say because uh, everyone handled it different, but I don't know what I would do. It's a sad situation, but we're happy to see the resilience of this young four-year-old kid. There will be, there were older siblings at home at the time. The gun is registered to someone in Southfield, so this investigation is a long way from being over. Detroit police are pleading with gun owners to get a gun lock once again, and you can pick one up for free at any precinct. And now to the war between Israel and Hamas. It appears a ground invasion into Gaza is imminent as Israel warns civilians to leave immediately. The FBI warning Americans to be vigilant and, of course, report anything suspicious. At least 27 Americans among those killed in the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. One, an American Israeli soldier. Overall, the death toll is approaching 3,000. Officials in Gaza saying more than 1,500 have been killed there, including 500 children. In all, airstrikes have displaced nearly 340,000 people. And as a result of what's happening over in the mid Middle East, uh, police across Metro Detroit, they're not taking any chances. Now, many agencies are stepping up patrols today around schools and places of worship. Out of an abundance of caution, Fox 2's Liz Lewin is live in Birmingham with more on that. Liz. 
Yeah, good morning, Amy and Brandon. We've been here all morning as the sun is up now. Folks really at work at school, as you mentioned, like many communities around the country and the world, uh, we are all just responding to the horrific terrorist attack in the Middle East and these law enforcement agencies and security agencies doing what they do best, stepping it up, as you just said, Amy. In fact, we are learning that the school district here in Birmingham has sent letters out to families, letting them know of an added security presence. You'll also see those in different denominations and houses of worship. You'll also see that at businesses, more police presence in places that the community at large is. And this is just a precautionary response. We don't want to alert people. But as we know, a lot of protests and uprisings have happened in different communities. And this is how Birmingham is choosing to respond proactively instead of uh, reactively around the world. We have heard state leaders. We've heard the president here in Michigan. Senator Gary Peters says in today's age, the need for more security in places of worship particularly is a priority and that we need to address the root of this hate and we need to find a solution. The Jewish Federation joining him in that call, the nonprofit saying as a place of refuge, the safety of Detroiters is their number one priority. Today, you have to think about it. This is very real. Again, with the rise of not only anti-Semitism, but uh, hate crimes uh, in general across the, the board. That's why uh, these resources uh, are so important. And I want folks to know that the, the resources are available. We want to help. Uh, it's critical that we keep people safe. As we're not only a Jewish synagogue, we're a Jewish community center. We have events, we have classes, we have many other um, occurrences taking place. So let's talk a little bit about those resources Senator Peters just mentioned. In fact, he's also the chair of the Homeland Security Committee. He says that they will be offering free assessments to buildings who perhaps it could be your business. It could be a different building that may need to add security. So that's something to look into. He says email his office and you can get details there. I want to note this, Amy and Brandon, very interesting. $7.5 million in nonprofit grant money in terms of security has gone to the state of Michigan alone. Do we need more? Do we need less? It's a fluid situation. We'll just have to wait and see. But as I mentioned today, Birmingham really rolling it out to keep this community safe. Reporting live in Birmingham, Liz Lewin, Fox 2. I will send it back to you, Amy and Brandon. Hey, Liz, we do appreciate it. But, you know, anytime that we see police uh, beef up their patrols in communities, it always gets people on edge. You have been out there since early this morning. You've seen people taking their kids to, to work or school, taking their going themselves to work, going to appointments. Do you get a sense of what it is like for people in the community? Is it a typical Friday or does this feel like something more? Look, I think it's really important for us to keep that underlying sentiment that this is a precautionary measure, right? N none of us in the news, nor I think the police or really anybody is here to scare people unnecessarily. But it is important to make sure that you have the resources to inform communities, schools, parents and families that listen, we are aware of what's going on in the world. And though we are not in Israel per se, you know, uprisings are happening in our community. How do we keep you safe? How do we keep you informed? We let you know ahead of time. That's exactly what Birmingham is doing. And, um, you know, given the fact of what we've seen in other communities, I think it's a smart and safe move to do so, Brandon. Better be proactive than reactive. Liz Lewin, we do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, guys.